Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Finbear Channel. Today is Sunday, and we're getting ready for the uh, trading week. And we're going to go over one of my favorite companies, or actually not one of the favorite company that I own, and that is Genius Brands International, stock ticker GNUS. Um, it's no secret. I love the company. I love the stock. I love the cartoon channel. I love it all. Superhero kindergarten. Yeah, I know it's horrible, but I don't care. Uh, those are my genius uh, stock twits group. They send me posts almost every single day about how much I love it. It's a little creepy. I'm not going to lie, but I don't care. I love it. I love the stock. So here we go. Um, now, this is going to be a different approach because I typically have not. I don't believe I have shown you guys the Seeking Alpha data on Genius Brands already. And so let's just do a little quick recap. So right here on ownership, I thought this was very interesting. I wanted to share this with everybody. So right now, as it stands, there are about 300 million shares outstanding for Genius. And of those 300 million shares outstanding, 17.3% are institutionally owned. That's a good thing. That is a very good thing because big money is invested in this company and big money doesn't like to lose money. And we don't want to lose money. And I like to be like that little sucker fish on the whales. You know, the whales got that big food. I'm just going to get a little, the little remnants. I am A-OK -okay with that because those little remnants are still a boatload of money more than I already had. Uh, so that's a cool thing for me to see. And I want to share that with everyone. That 17.3%, according to Seeking Alpha, is institutionally owned. In addition to that, private corporations, 1.91%. Individual insiders, 5%. And then the public, which is you and I, the retailers, we own 75.73% of the total stock, which is very, very interesting. Who doesn't love the stock? I mean, honestly, it's a great, great thing. Uh, another great thing I want to bring up here, I've brought this up on previous videos, not for Genius, but for some others. Uh, short interest, holy cow, 16.38%. That's higher than AMC. And if you look at the recent Ortex data, I believe that's higher than GameStop right now, but you know, we're not talking about synthetic shares. And there might be synthetic shares going on here as well. Uh, another very, very cool thing on this that I thought that I liked personally was the Altman Z score, which is 3.23. And the Altman Z score, I have it uh, highlighted so you guys can see it right there. It predicts the probability that a firm will go to bankruptcy within two years. If um, the company has under a 1.8 score, but if they have over a score of three, then they are less likely to go bankrupt and do solid. Now, I did um, a review of a company just the other day, I think it was five. I think it was like 5.13 or something like that. But um, Genius has a 3.23, which means they're right there. They're, they're in the good zone. They're not in between. They're above the good zone, which I love because I love this company. Uh, who doesn't? Another really good piece of news that um, is coming out and effective, I believe, tomorrow is the SEC has their new rule. And I, I don't know if I know the letters right, but I believe it's DTCC hyphen. 002. And what this rule is, is there's a new form that the SEC is requiring all companies to hold short positions and that they must fill out. It's a new form. But here's the kicker that I personally love is that if they fill out the form incorrectly or don't do it on time or don't do what they're supposed to do with this form, they automatically get liquidated out of positions. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so it's very exciting. A lot of the people in Nation and AMC and GameStop are very bullish about this, very excited. But it doesn't just uh, uh, um, it doesn't just work on AMC and GameStop for all stocks on the market. It's very exciting for all these other players. You got some that's um, heavily short. You got you know this company. You got Naked. You've got so so many that are being. This is going to help. This is going to help get some of this under control. Now I say that. Lightly, though, you got to remember the SEC, the DTC, the OCC, all of those guys, right? All the alphabets. They're all about self-regulation. There, there is no big brother that you do this right or you're going to get in trouble. Uh, when, when they do something wrong, they get stuck with like a, a $1 million, um, and that's a lot, a $1 million fine, even though they're making a couple hundred million. Uh, so I'm curious to see if the fines, if, if there's not enough bite to it, that the hedge funds just don't care. They're like, Okay, I'll pay you guys a million for not filling out the form right. Go ahead, liquidate me. I still made my money. So I'm curious to see long term how this works. I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful. But let's be honest, decades have gone by where the system has been not working. Do you think it's automatically going to work right away? But I'm an optimist. I got to remember that. Positive thinking, positive thinking, positive thinking. Because if they screw over my genius brands, I'm going to be really upset. I'm going to be really, really upset. Okay, so that's the chart. you guys logged in anyhow, right? So here we've got the chart. We've got some movement going on. Um, the past few days, this is the hourly. 
The past week, it was a red week. We went down. Am I happy about it? Heck no. I got calls expiring in two weeks. I need some upward momentum happening. I, I did not choose my calls very well. Uh, <laughs> they're coming up for July. Um, you know, Big Brother must have figured me out. But no, so we hit a peak up here at 228, which was amazing. Uh, but now we've come down. And as you see, uh, let me see what was this one. RSI here was 83.69. RSI here at this peak was 86. So RSI got higher. Uh, so we had a higher, high, higher, high. So we're, we're still okay. We're still okay. Um, it had to cool down. It was 86. That's high. It only goes to 100. Um, we don't see much higher very frequently. Uh, so we came right, right back down to where we started, but we have been crossing through various levels of support. Uh, yesterday and last week, or not yesterday, sorry, Friday, we, we dropped below our most recent area of support, was very, which was very disheartening for me. I'm not going to lie. I was a little disappointed. Uh, we are now touching down at the $1.86 line, um, which, was, as you can see right here, this yellow, that's showing that this was our area of support that we had most recently, and that's where price action closed on Friday at. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that we bounce back. However, the stocks right here, the blue line, which is our signal line, is crossing under the red, is below it, is not, it's, it's going down, so it's showing like a little curvage. So we might have a few more red candles ahead of us. But I am hoping um, if we are gonna have those red candles, I want these little doji candles. I want these indecision candles. I want to show, I want to see so much momentum and volume happening here that is not red, that is not selling volume, but a green. Let's get some good green volume happening and get a strong doji indicator so that we can have a reversal here and then start making an upward momentum. We are playing along the bottom line of that Bollinger Band and I'm tired of it. I don't want it. Let's go. Let's, let's hit this red line. Let's get back up to $1.92. And it's going to test it a little bit. It might go, ooh, and then let's just power right through it. Let's just go on. Um, that would make me happy. I think it would make you guys happy. Or or worst case scenario, let's play. Let's play between $1.86 and $1.92. Let's build some strong consolidation in, the, in between those two lines. Because when we do that, we build a good area of support right there. Then we can use that to condense and then shoot up. I would much rather see that than see us go limp and continue falling. I don't want to continue falling. I, I think that this company is so undervalued. It's ridiculous. I would like to see continued upward momentum. And with how low, honestly, the stock is already, we are in undersold territory. Um, the stock signal is at 15.91. It goes down to zero, but let's not get there. Why, why be in oversold territory? Let's get back into the bullish zone. So, I think that we're going to see reversal soon. Um, I'm hoping that's not my confirmation bias speaking. I, you know, we know how much I love the company. I'm excited about it. So let's just fingers crossed. Look at the uh, charts. Let's, let's pray to the chart gods. Come on, guys. And keep watching those superhero in the garden so we can get more views, so we can make this company more fundamentally strong so that we can get stronger numbers, more people buying so that we can get that momentum that we need to see the moon. Uh, and that is my coverage for today on Genius Brands. I hope it was beneficial and useful to you. If you enjoy more content like this, please let me know. Also, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. It helps us gain more followers to build our community. The more people we have, the more information that we can gather, the more, the stronger we can become. The more I learn from you, the more you learn from me, and the more we grow. So go out there, have an amazing week, do wonderful things. Happy Father's Day, and let's go make some money.